It's been a it's been a cloudy winter, but besides that, it's been a great winter. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think so too. Hey everyone. Hey Jared. What's up, Tobias? Did I sit hear somebody talk about Florida? Yeah. Is that where you're at? <clears throat> yes, I'm in Florida. Yeah. Okay, great. Me too. Welcome to Florida. Thank you. Where are you based? In I'm in Jupiter. You're the one who wrote me, right? Uh, about uh, Morikami. I don't think so. Oh, no, yeah. there's somebody else from, from uh, Jupiter then. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let's just give it another minute and then we'll get going. Hi, Monica. It's good to see you. Yeah. If you can, please turn your cameras on. We'll, we'll get a bit interactive here. If you have a good reason not to, uh, of course, I won't force you to. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I thought about, the one that she said, which is like the PT006, which is the one that's got the B shape. There you go. All right, let's see. Um, here we go. How is everyone's day going? Going good? Good Friday so far? Good. Okay, we're ready to go. Hey, James, Natalie, Rod. Is it Sitan? How do you pronounce your name? Patel? I'm sorry. Yeah, Sitan Patel. Sitan? Great to meet you. Yep. Great to meet you. Okay, I'm just going to get going. Maybe there's some people coming in still. First of all, uh, thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your valuable day. And um, so today we're going to talk about the topic of how to design your business for a better quality of life. And uh, I won't have time to ask everyone why you came, but I guess there might be a reason that sort of links to a gap in where would you like your business to be or your life to be in terms of how you're running it. And we'll talk about that. So I'm not here to be the life coach. I am the guy who is more about how you can design your business so that you can have a better quality of life. And um, so just to kind of give you a little bit of a background, like why am I talking about this topic and why is it dear to me? It's really coming from my own history. And I know some of you uh, from, from working with you before, you might know my story, but just in a nutshell. So as I was running, I was building primarily my brand consultancy and a, and a few agencies um, underneath it and did that for about 13, 12, 12, 13 years. And there was a time in my life where I was just so incredibly stressed out and uh yeah, i'm sure some of you can relate to that but when you have to make payroll and sometimes cash was really tight there were times where the business was just like barely making it there were better times etc but i concluded at one point in my life and and funnily enough it was actually i was working in so i'm from helsinki finland and i was working with these nordic brands and particularly from finland we have some really nice design brands like one is called Ethala. they make very nice glassware and there's Fiskars you might know them for their for their their orange scissors and a lot of other products and and I did a lot of study on like the Nordics and Nordic design values which I'm a big fan of a kind of a product of and I remember all those presentations were all about the Nordics have been particularly good at designing for quality of life and for um for sort of making uh making a better quality of life accessible to everyone. So there's a lot about that equality and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I was looking at all those slides, remember thinking, well, that's not really how I live my life at all. Like I'm super extended and I, I, I know that I'm sacrificing a lot and somebody always has to pay a price for that. And it's not only me, but it's also my family. I have small children at the time. Now they're 13 and nine, two daughters. But I remember just thinking like, there's some shifts that I need to make. And I ended up making a pretty pretty uh, big shift. I, I was taking a good look at the business model. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about what are some shifts that you can make if you want to have a more zen-like business and have less stress in your life. And um, 
by the way, I'm not saying <clears throat> or, or advocating that that necessarily you'll achieve like this complete nirvana or like, I'm sure there is such a model. For me, it's more about like, what is really important in my life and what kind of business do I want? So there's, I'm not willing to do whatever it takes at the expense of myself and my family. So anyway, so so from that day forward, as I had that realization, I started to rethink and I actually gave up my whole agency. And some a lot of people told me I was crazy because I built it for so long. And I had really gotten it to a very good place. And we had become really profitable and all those things. But there was still something in me that I felt like this is not really the life that I want for myself for, you know, down the line. So I made a lot of changes and I came into this online space. And again, it's not to say that my life has, has no stress or things I'd like to improve. But I did realize that there are things and I, and I really firmly believe in that you can do if you kind of feel something similar to what I was speaking about. Anyone in here can relate to what I just talked about? See a share, show of hands. <laughs> Jared, definitely. Yeah. I think to some degree, we all do that. And I think to some degree, you might always be that to a certain extent as entrepreneurs. But let's see, we're going we're gonna to get into this. And, and the first I wanted to, um, to get into is really to do a little exercise with you. And so if you have a piece of paper or just somewhere to make notes, this uh, is just about kind of bringing these... Um, thoughts to the surface. And so I want to ask you first, what are some reoccurring emotions that surface for you on a daily or weekly basis and about your current reality that you don't like? And if you can write down a few of those for yourselves, and if you're uh, brave enough and kind enough to share in the chat, um, um, I, I appreciate that but you don't have to do that. It's more important that you do this for yourself. So for example, I remember feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of like, I don't have enough time, uh, you know, a lot of fear in terms of like certain pay dates, like, like uh, salaries coming up and so forth. Like what are those things that keep coming up for you that you don't like? That's my first question. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. It's going to be fast, a bit unfair for a workshop style. And so if you can think of something right now, then my follow-up question is what are the things that are causing these, this reality, these emotions? Like what lies at the root? What is the problem in your opinion? Or even the problem behind the problem? Joseph's overcoming, appreciating patience. Yeah, I know that one too. I meant by I meant to say I, I hit enter, but I meant to say overcoming needing it now and appreciating patience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's good. Jared says frustration with minutia and longing for a more free form creative experience. Yes, great. Thanks for sharing. So then I want you also, as you do this, and I'm going to go pretty fast, you can, you can revisit these, but like you think about what is the problem and what are the symptoms of those problems and what are causing them? Then overwhelm, frustration, stress, anxiety for not taking entire control of where I'm going. Yes, the root, procrastination, lack of momentum, don't know where to start. Yes, all very familiar to me as well. I'd like to now for you to write down what are things you are no longer willing to accept in your life? Because you have to draw a line and say, what must change going forward? I will not tolerate this feeling or this reality anymore. Write that down for yourself. You don't have to share. If you share, that's, that's great. Not the right structure in place, I hear you. Complexity, lack of structure, yeah comes up a lot. We're going to talk about that. What will you no longer accept? Because everything starts with a decision. I'm going to give you ideas for the things you can change.
Now, do you need more time? Um, the next thing I'm going to ask you to think about, no longer accept the tension of the uncontroll uncontrollables. Yeah, that's a great point. The next thing I want you to think about, what is different about, I'm going to call it a Zen-like business. And I think you can define that for yourself, but a business where you're free from those emotions most of the time. You know, there's going to have some of them, right? But like, what, what does that look like? What kind of business is that? How is that different from what you're doing today? And what are some problems that are no longer there? You can take a minute just to jot down something. And you can, again, continue after this if you want to go deeper. Good stuff there, Oscar. What does that business provide you when it has some more Zen in it, when it's designed for a better quality of life? And think about what is that quality of life? What, is, what do you have more of? You want more time, more money, freedom, impact, all those things. We're going to get into that in, in a second. I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. Maximum valuable output from creative ideas. Yes, I, I, I call that leverage. So, provides creative freedom, joyous experiences, grateful celebrations. Yes, I love the sound of that. Does anyone wanna jump in, ask a question, or think I'm going too fast before I move on? No? Okay, so I'm going to be talking about four areas where you can make some changes, and all of these will help you, um, you know, reduce cortisol levels if you do it well, and reduce the anxiety and distress, not to zero necessarily, but significantly. And the first thing I'd like to to suggest is that you work on a master plan for yourself. Because a big part, and I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, not just my clients, but also talk to a lot of entrepreneurs all the time. And I feel like a lot of times, one of the root problems is that they haven't really defined the vision and not just their company vision, but really having crystal cl clarity on the kind of life that they want to live. And then reverse that back to what kind of business will allow for that kind of life and lifestyle to be possible. You know, asking yourself, what has to be true about my business so that I can have a better quality of life? So a master plan, essentially for me, it really starts with like a holistic idea of your life. Do you want to be able to take a full day off every week? Do you want to take four days off every week? Uh, does it mean they're going to commit to six trips per year with your family. So you have to have the money and the time to do that. Or is it something else? What is it for you? What are, just write down spontaneously three things at the top of your head. Oscar says, free will to do what I want, where I want, and where I want. Where I want and where I want. I mean, I guess what I want, where I want. But that's, that's freedom, right? Life on your terms. So what are some changes that you can make? And let's I'm going to go through some ideas. The first thing, obviously, is kind of changing your, your thinking, changing your mindset about uh, your business. And I think for me, I guess, you know, I, I tend to go a bit like alpha in a sense that I like have this ambitious drive. And I was like, I'm going to build a tallest building in town and my agent is going to be the best and blah, blah. And, and kind of for me, a big shift was like accepting that actually that's not the most important 
thing to me, and maybe this came with age, um, being my late 40s, I started to prioritize different things. But if I were to look back at like the 10 most stressful years of my life, I think I should have, my note to self would have been like, be really clear about what matters to you and and uh, don't just chase it for ego and money. Uh, and again, not to say that those things could be important. Uh, money definitely for me equals, it almost equals freedom in many ways. But do it in a way where you don't have to sacrifice the best years of your life. So changing your mindset, change your thinking, changing your vision, changing your purpose. What could you change about what you're building that would get you more in alignment with what you wrote down in terms of what you want? And by the way, feel free to throw in. Uh, we're not a big group. So if you have questions or comments, feel free to jump in at that time. What was the question on this device? What to change to become in alignment with those goals? Yeah, if you think about what kind of business you'd like to have, like a business that allows me to take three days off per week or or one day off or or whatever it is, something else, give me this amount of money. You know, what is a vision for that business that kind of gets you in alignment? So for example, for me, like I, you know, dream of a high quality of life. And then working your ass off and not really having a life for me is, is not in alignment. And I think that's really the problem because we as entrepreneurs, we're, we're optimists and we, we, we kind of believe in delaying gratification. So if I do insert the shit you do right now, I will have X someday. But the problem is we sometimes don't even know what that, when that someday is. And there's a lot of uncertainty. I think that the other way to think about it is like, if I do certain things now, I can have something right now that I'm gonna be grateful for. It's gonna make my life better. I might still strive for something bigger down the line and I, I'm all about that. But what is it that I can change about the now? What can I change? How can I change my mindset? How can I change my vision? Um, and what can I do to change my role in my company? This is a really, really big one. Like, I'm sure you've all heard of this idea and you're wrestling with this idea. I don't work in the business, work on the business, right? So. There's also another level to this, and you could ask yourself, uh, what about working above the business? So for example, if you wanted to make a shift and start to see yourself as an owner, even an investor, you could argue, okay, well, I'm gonna build this business. I'm gonna build it like a machine, and I'm not gonna be part of that machine, or at least the cogs in that machine. So I can either just be a kind of on the business person, or I could actually, my goal could be to, to get somebody else to run the business and I'm become an owner and maybe I'll get one or two other businesses. I get into acquisitions or I get into uh, earning my way into other businesses or building other businesses. And now I sit on this semi-passive uh, businesses where I don't have to do so much and be part of the daily operations. Like that's a big change that you can make to decide not to be. But then again, you have to listen to yourself. If you love the actual doing, you're a creator, you want to do that. Maybe there are other roles that you need to give up instead and keep that for yourself. Um, then speaking of the master plan, and again, I'm launching this mastermind, which I'll be subtly promoting here. This is what we'll do inside the mastermind. And so we'll obviously have much more time to spend on this, but I want you to think about, and if you can't come up with a number now, that's fine. What, how much money do you want to support the life, the quality of life that you want? Because that is at the end of the day, key to make your business work for you. You don't work for the business, the business should work for you. And to, to, to do that math, you really have to consider not just revenue, obviously you have to consider profits after tax. How much does your lifestyle require? and reverse engineer it up to something. So for example, if you made a million dollars per year and you had a 30% profit margin, that would be 300,000, then cut, take off your tax. And let's say you were left with 200,000. Now you ask yourself, okay, is that sufficient? Or, or, you know, or insert another sum here, 200,000 per year or 10 million, it doesn't matter. But that's a really, really important start, starting point because with this master plan, with this clear, clear, vivid vision of what you want and I mean your life and your business, 
you have to start to reverse engineering into goals and milestone goals. And those goals need to have numbers attached to them. Otherwise, they just tend to be too abstract. So I want this kind of life. Here's my vision for my life. I want to work remotely. I want to be able, I, I want to be able to move to Florida from Finland, have a beautiful home with a pool, have 120 yards to my tennis. Not trying to say that I don't have problems. My life is perfect. But I made some of those changes because I did this exercise. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. And my family luckily said, yes, let's go. And uh, that gives me a lot of quality of life. I still, I still get to work, but I do it remotely. And I love working. So what is it for you? But there has to be a number that makes it, otherwise it's kind of a, uh, it's a dangerous thing to do if you don't think of it through the numbers, right? Thoughts, comments, questions? If not, then I'm gonna move on and uh, we're gonna talk about step number two in this process. I know we're going really fast, but I want you to demonstrate how this works. Uh, the second piece is really what you can change I'm going to call it change your strategy. And I'm going to include your business model and your offer in this. And we, we're we not going to argue whether that's part of strategy or not. I don't think it is, but I'm just going to say change your strategy. So changing your strategy and a really, really, really big part of this is what are you going to focus on? Who are you going to focus on? And if you've been getting my emails and seeing any of my content, I am all about simplifying. Why? But it's part of one of those Nordic values in addition to functionality and uh, sustainability and beauty and all those things I love. But simplicity for me essentially is about leverage. And I think one of the best shifts you can make for yourself is to find a positioning in a business model and build offerings that have as much leverage in, as possible. What does that mean? Well, if you sell one hour and get paid for one hour, there is actually zero leverage in that. You can still make a lot of money, but you have to sell each hour and get paid for it. And then there's like the amount of work equals one to, to one in sort of payment versus time spent. You can get leverage by hiring people. So they do a lot of their work, or you can have a business model that, that, that provides you with leverage, meaning that, for example, you can automate some parts of what you do. You can do group coaching versus one-to-one, -one, which has that model have more has more leverage in it. Um, when it comes to simplifying your business, um, you, you are familiar with the 80-20 principle, I'm sure. That principle will help you a lot. If you start to take a look at your customers, your clients, and your offerings, first and foremost, that will get you very far. So for example, let's say you have, let's call all your clients are 100%, right? By the 80-20 principle, 80% of them will bring in only 20% of your sales on profits. And that usually is true. I mean, somewhere in that ratio, right? So the question is, who should I no longer focus on? You know, which clients give me 80% of my headaches and my worries and my anxieties and who do I really want to work with? And who are the most profitable ones? If you were to just do that, that's going to already give you a much more zen-like business. And the, the fallacy is to think that because I focus on, I have a broader positioning, I can get more business. I cast a wider net. But often the opposite is true. You have to work a lot harder to prove yourself with a more generic offering and you become a commodity where what makes more sense is to be the most relevant, to be the only choice for somebody, the best and only viable choice. And to do that, you want to be the most relevant, to provide value that is most relevant to somebody, the most useful. When it comes to building offerings, I'd say you probably need a more clear offering that offers a specific measurable end result and something that is easier to sell. That's why I'm so big into productizing, by the way. Especially having one front-end offering where I can go and sell somebody on a kind of a lower-end commitment and then upsell them on something else. So for example, I don't know which business you're all in, but it could be that you have 
a workshop product productized as the front end, and you have a recurring revenue business at the back end, which again will make your shoulders drop because you have longer term commitments from clients. Okay, let's see here. I have, um, what's the cost of your program? The I can jump into it right now if you want. Um, you can find the program. I send out a link. It's the simplecompany.com forward slash mastermind. And uh, the opening offer, of, you know, is 2K a month. So I'll, I'll talk more about that and how uh, you can justify that. So you said for uh, customers, clients, which of my past clients give me headaches? Which clients do I like to work with? What was the third question? Um, which are the most profitable? Which clients are the most profitable? Just because the assumption is profits equal freedom. Profits equal choice. Without money in your business, you're always going to be stressed. So if you... If you look at your clients, past clients, existing clients, ask yourself, which one is the most ideal for me? Even if you shrunk your business and didn't serve the, the worst ones, you'd still probably both be happier and probably most be more profitable. Let me give you a very simple uh, over, like let's, let's just play with this for a while. Let's say somebody has a business doing 1 million and they make 200,000 in profits. That's 20% profit. Now, by the 80-20 principle, 80% of that profit comes from 20% of customers. So 160,000 of 200,000 actually comes from 20 customers, uh, 20, sorry, 20% 20 of customers. And uh, we could go a lot deeper on that, but that's, that's, the, that's the rule here. But look inside any agency, particularly I work a lot with agencies, consultancies, they're actually over-reliant on one or two customers, sometimes as much as 90 or 95%, which is dangerous but that's usually what it looks like. But then they spend uh, 60, 70, 80% of their time serving these small companies that just pay for overheads instead of cutting overhead and just going with the really profitable ones and having a diversified customer base. Um, all right. So I talked about changing your strategy, simplifying, focusing. I talked about looking at your business model, for example, selling projects, is heavy. Selling one-offs where you don't have a back-end offer, where you don't have a recurring revenue model is heavy. It's going to add a lot of stress to you. So there are models that are significantly better. Changing your offering. Um, and then now I'm going to show my first slide. Step number three for me is building the machine. And when I say building the machine is like, if you're not running your business on systems, your business is run on you you have to play a game of whack-a-mole. You have to continually be making up for the shortcomings, uh, the lack of processes, SOPs in the system. And so the way to illustrate this in my simple company framework is this, and you might've seen this, if you've seen my content, um, but I pretty much swear by this. I. The premise of this is like if you think of three main cogs in your business, you could think of it this way. You have to have ongoing activity in the attract wheel, which is your branding or marketing. How do I reach people? How do I connect with them to gain their trust and interest? And how do I activate them? And what happens so I can get leads or opportunities? You have to map what you're doing currently, set your baseline, and realize, hey, if I want to grow this and I just want to design the process first, I will need to figure out what I'm doing to get leads. So the first step when I say build a machine is mapping this. What does it look like for you currently? And what could it look like? So you're designing your business. You're designing your systems. How do I attract leads? How many leads do I need? How am I going to convert them into customers, into sales? So customers and the price that they pay per transaction. And how many times do they buy? Are, is basically the function of sales, the only three ways to generate sales. And then finally, how do I deliver it consistently with, without necessarily me being part of that equation, if that's what you want? That system needs to exist and then it gives you the profit that you're looking for. And then you track everything. 
like having a system like this is golden and is a Zen move, if any. This is one of the most important things you can do in your business. What do you think? Agree? Disagree? And so I talked about changing the strategy, the master plan, I talked about changing the strategy, and I talked about building the machine. And that's just a very quick overview. Again, you have to map out your business based on your results. If you want to make, let's say in my example here, the mastermind I mentioned, it's 2K a month with a minimum of six month commitments. I want to do it for a full year with people actually. Uh, and I'm providing like a way out if for some reason you don't like it after 30 days. But let's say if I get 20 people to join for 2K a month, that's 40K a month. And then if I have a front end product and some other stuff I'm doing, let's say I'm getting to 50K per month or so, whatever it is, let's say that was the goal. That's a pretty simple business, actually. You know, um, now I have other stuff doing going on, so I'm not smart enough to only run that business, which could be a really great business to run, but I have some other things, but I have to keep thinking about that goal from a numbers point of view. Okay, well, how many leads will I need? How am I going to convert them? Where are going to get the leads? And then I, you know, create that plan. And if you don't have that plan, and this is what the mastermind builds on this, like having a solid, clear plan that you can execute is key, key, key. Zen is the way. Agreed. <laughs> I love that. Okay. It's going to see that I'm uh, doing well on time here. Any questions, thoughts so far? Is this helpful or am I boring you to death? Great, thank you. So then actually the final piece I wanna talk about is now that let's say you're clear on the plan, you made some decisions where you change your business model, your offering, your positioning perhaps, who you work with, all things that will drop your shoulders, make you breathe and feel, okay, this is something I can see it, it's clear, I know my numbers, now it's more about execution. So the last piece here I wanna talk about is growing your profits. Because again, profits for me is the way to choice and freedom and living life on your terms. And I'm sure you agree, without money, it's quite hard to do anything, even if you wanted to give it to charity. Money is great for that purpose too. And so, okay, what can you do to grow the profits of your business? So I'm going to, to show you something here again. Uh, let me see one second. Here we go. Everything I just showed you, let me show you this slide here. Um, these two pictures here, they actually are kind of one and the same. And the reason is if you think of your business in terms of the key results that you're trying to create, any business in the world, it comes down to these seven or even the first six, if you're not concerned about your valuation, which is like how much you're gonna get when you sometimes, sometimes sell your company, which is a whole different thing, which is really about building systems and removing, um, making sure that the goodwill of the business, like you, your brand, uh, your role is embedded into the culture and the process of the company, because otherwise people don't wanna pay for that. But the first, six ones are the ones you need to concern yourself with. And on the right picture here, they are actually a cause and effect sequence here. So your business is predicated, the results in your business are predicated on these things. How many leads are you getting? How many of them are you converting into customers? How much do they pay when they buy on average? And if you have a lot of shitty clients, sorry, I shouldn't say that, that revenue might be a lot lower. Uh, how many times do they buy? Are you running a uh one night stand business or are you into relationships and getting married to business huge difference in terms of having a zen like business what are your margins what are your costs and we could take in the the factor of valuation as well so 
how do you grow? I mean, it, really one way to focus and to simplify your business is to think about everything through these key numbers. How do I do whatever I need to do the most? And I'm going to go through 10 uh, multipliers. And the cool thing about this is, let me first show you something that would be maybe a little bit uh, messy looking. Let me turn this around. Oops. Oh, I did it. Okay. There we go. So here, here's a tool that is uh, I use with clients. And here's an example of, um, or this is a real example of somebody I did this exercise with. And you can do this for yourself as well. Ask yourself, what's my baseline? How am I running my business right now? So number one, how many leads am I getting? And leads define, let's say, the people you people that raised their hand or shown interest in some way. Let's say you're getting 10 leads per month. Okay, great. Now, how many of them become customers? And with this company, the average was 2.3. That's a 23% conversion rate, which is actually pretty good. There are steps that happen in between that you need to map out. You know, how many of them am I losing? Why am I losing them? There's a bunch of things you, things you can do to kind of um, prevent the, the boat from leaking, if you will. So you maximize the conversion rate. And then, okay, if the offer is an average of 50K every time you sell something, and they buy, in this case, they bought an average of five times per year. That gives you a 250,000 CLV, customer lifetime value, over 12 months. And that's a very important metric. And as you can see, if they only sold it one time, obviously they would need five times more clients, which is costly and very stressful. And then you have profit margin, you have operating, et cetera. And then you, I'll still show this, might or might not be relevant, the multiple for a company like this making 1 million in profits is somewhere around four times EBITDA, four times profit. So it's worth about four or 4.4 million here. On the right side, if you look at that side, we start to make small changes. And I'll talk about some of the, the ways you can do that. If we grew leads by 20%, uh, you know, it's only two more leads per month. How could we do that? And then we have a bunch of different ways. Most agencies will rely on so-called random referrals which means we just get referrals every now and then. We don't make it very predictable, which adds more vulnerability and stress to the business, where instead you can have a structured referral system in place. You could have partnership, joint ventures. You could run ads. You could do a million other things to get leads, your own content channels. You could do uh, webinars. You could do all kinds of things to capture leads and to activate them right. And then we have the question of, okay, how can we you know, get more customers? And, and as you can see, the point here is that it compounds. So this company, by growing sales by 30%, which comes from small improvements here or there, and by shrinking their costs by 10%, both their gross margin and the operating expenses combined, they're doubling their profits, 101%. But the really cool thing is, well, this actually now involves them being part of a, a collective. Uh, that's another thing we're working on. But it, you can dramatically, basically, improve the, the valuation when you sell the company. But even if they didn't, now their company would be, let's say it was still a, let's say it was a five, two, they would be making 2.2 million times five. Now they're worth like 11 million or whatever it is. So that's pretty cool. So that's really what you, you want to be focusing on. And um let me jump over to, to not make this too, sorry. Jump back to this too. So the final thing I just wanted to share here, and then we can do a little bit of Q&A. It's just like, if you focus on these 10 things, the first three were what I already talked about, changing the strategy, including your business model, including your offering. And then you come up with a way, you map the business, you build a machine, and then the rest is essentially about managing how you get leads consistently, reliably, and predictably. What is your process, your way of converting customers? Is it with a clear low-end front-end offer that I talked about? Is it about productizing a front-end offering, which is a great way to do this? Is it about doing different proposals for every client every time and maybe selling one of them, which I don't like, which I did for over 10 years? Or is it something else? How do I make more money per transaction? How can I, can I raise prices by 5% and no one notices? Could work. 
Can you bundle offerings? Can you sell somebody else's offering to expand your portfolio? Can you do joint ventures? Again, here, there are so many different ways you could do to raise your, your average transaction with it. Can you upsell? Can you downsell? Make more money per customer. That means, okay, how can we keep them for longer? Well, do we have a way to, to expand the journey that they're on? Let's say if you're doing brand strategy, which I used to do a lot, that's a project, but maybe I can sell them on an internal transformation because now they have a strategy and they might just screw it up. Can I get on a retainer and make sure that I stay with them as a brand advisor or insert any other business here? Um, here also collaborating with other people, where's the white space inside the client? If you're able to come in the door, how can you expand inside the customer? to sell more things. If you don't have those products, you can sell somebody else's products to, through collaborations. And this is a part, big part why collectives and other kind of networks are good because you can make more money from your customers if you're smart. Um, number eight, increase margins. What, what can you do to increase your margins? Can you insource slash outsource? Can you, you know, again, price, price your products higher? Um, systematizing is definitely a margin booster, becoming more efficient in terms of how you deliver value, um, setting new boundaries and rules with clients to not abuse you if you're in a service business where they kind of have all the power. You know, there again, this is there are many factors that can play play in here. And also reducing operating costs. <clears throat> what can you do to shave a little bit here and there? And something that I mean I I guess we've got to love growing businesses and sometimes it feels boring to, to save costs. But if you think about it, again, I'm going to give you an example. If you have a business doing 1 million and you're making 20% in profits, it means you have 800,000 in costs. And so a 10% a, a savings in cost means 80,000 directly to your bottom line, which means now you have 280,000 in profits. That's significant. So you know, that's significant. So, so if you do both, you're going to have a lot of, uh, a big increase in your profits. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about acquisitions. Well, it's kind of a little bit of a different chapter in the book, but these are kind of the, this is the framework. And I mentioned the, the uh, before I'll do a little bit of q and I'll just, I'll just show that I grew up this. Sorry, give me one second here. Share, there again. Here. So quickly about the masterminds and we'll, we'll leave some time for Q&A. Um, all the ideas I talked about really is what I baked into this mastermind. There's a video where I talk about this stuff. I won't go into to this too much, but it's about these same ideas. And I would say key things, the master plan, sorry here, building the master plan, designing the business for the freedom, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want, the quality of life, it definitely will mean uh, systematizing your business, finding a simple uh, business model, the right offerings for you, and then working together with accountability partners in a group with me as your mentor to making this happen. And this is not something you do in, in a month. You know, you can get fast sales and a fast kind of a, uh, action but i would say you should give it a year to transform your business you should give it at least six months you can make a lot happen but what i do know from running a lot of this before is that when you have an accountability partner or just being accountable to the group and having to show up on calls and stuff like that and having somebody ask about it is just that is going to make you take a lot more action and so i've got the same you can find this simplecomment.com forward slash mastermind and I have the same model here. We'll throughout the whole year, we're going to work through all these. I have more than a hundred different ways to grow your business under these 10 categories, actually more like 150. And we'll we'll go through them. And so yeah, it's all based on your particular dream. And then first I'll work with you personally to solidify that plan so that it's as watertight as possible. And then we, we might adjust it as long as we go. 
and then it's really about supporting you. And a, and a mastermind mentality and a, is all about the group also coming together to support. It's not just me, it's also the group. So encouraging you to stay on track, to expand your mindset, hopefully your identity as well. And that's it. And so like I said, um, I do this, it's 2K a month, six months I'd like you to commit to. If after 30 days you feel like you made a bad decision, then that's okay. And you know you can leave after 30 days. But I'm really looking for people who want to make this a commitment and work a bit more long-term. And this is, of course, in alignment with what I spoke about. I don't want to be selling people every month. I want to find the right people and work with them long-term. That's it for me. Thanks so much for your attention. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions or comments that you might have. Any thoughts? Michael says, thanks. Have a great weekend. Well, I wish that to you as well. I guess you left. Do we build the systems while... By the way, you can also speak up if you have a question. Do we build the systems while in the mastermind? Uh, is it difficult to build it on my own? Um, yes, we do that as part of mastermind. And um, if you haven't done it before, it could be a bit complicated, but the idea is to make it simple, obviously. So, I mean, yes, you can do it on your own. Um, will it be easier if you do it together with me? Yes, I believe so, but I'm biased. Um, yeah. Oscar says, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for attending. Does anyone else want to comment, have a question? Any feedback from me, for me, when it, when it comes to the whole concept? Do you think it's a good concept? Emphasizing designing quality, for, quality of life over just business? I have got a question. Yeah. Um, I've gone through, I, so I do think it's a great concept. I think, and you know, you're talking about Zen, so it's a great experience. It's a great reality, not just a concept, but I, I have gone through things, you know, in the same universe as this with respect to like the vision, breaking that down to the goals and then getting to the numbers. What I have found often as a challenge is, you know, it's like you do that exercise but then I'm just asking to you, what do you do to keep that more visionary thinking that connects to the strategy kind of like front of mind for you? Like keep it yeah. like, the, you know, a week from now, a month from now, you have it in focus so you don't forget about it. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. So uh, we do something called, which I didn't mention, uh, a, a game plan. So everything gets written down in a very granular way. Because I don't believe in just that kind of high in the sky thinking, uh, which is great for motivating yourself and stuff, but it needs to turn into a plan. So I'm all about, like if you saw me with the numbers and stuff, maybe that uh, you see, like, I want you to have a plan which says, here's what you're going to need, not to, to hit every year, every month, but every day and every week. So it could mean you are committed to doing these and these things to get these and these many calls so and so many times and is it you who's going to take those calls you or somebody else let's get you there that way we're going to hit you know whatever 20 30k a month or 100k a month then after that we're going to go and recruit a team here are the offerings and you know okay what do we need to build right now so the first step might be now we need to do some building work and then after that it's all about supporting you and you know converting then it might be like oh i can't get people to you know people are ghosting me or you know they're not they're not buying and blah, blah, blah. And then we'll deal with that. So it's like that weekly accountability and weekly support of that. And I just know from doing this for a long time that, that that's a huge help. And I don't attribute the, the credits just to myself, but, but also to the group to a large degree because you're part of something. You've made a decision and a commitment. And just psychologically, that's a big part of it. You're not alone. You're committed. You're on a journey and you've made a decision. That in itself will already be a big part of it. Awesome. Thank you for that answer. Thank you. Hey, Peter. Peter is there. All right. Well, if there aren't any more questions or comments, then I'll, I'll wish you all a great weekend. And please check out the website. If you are interested, make sure you let me know. Write me an email, Tobias at The Simple Company or any other, or answer my emails that I'm sending you. And let's talk about it. 
All right. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for coming. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.